today we'll be dissecting a fish. This is what you're going to need. You're going to number yourselves one, two, and three, so you all get a share at cutting the fish. Before we even begin, you're going to have to be really careful because these little babies on the top here aren't just for decoration, they're there to defend themselves. Predators, and these can give you a splinter. Nobody wants a fishy splinter in their skin, believe me. See how sharp they are? You're going to have to be really careful about that. When you take your fish in your grooves, just have a look at the outside of it. You can squeeze his mouth and open that up. Nice and wide. You can see his eyes, they don't have eyelids. Um, you can see where he has his poop. And most importantly, most interestingly, there's this long line here called a lateral line. When the fish is swimming along, this line here has cells that when it goes deep underwater, they shrink and when they come up at the top of the water, they get larger. So this lateral sideways line tells the fish how deep it is in the water. Put your finger inside his mouth and feel his teeth. Lift open this hard bony flap. Put your finger in and you can see your finger on the other side, but be careful, it's sharp. Notice that these scales are transparent and yet the fish has its own colour. six. Now we're going to dissect the eye. When you dissect things, it's always a good idea to keep your mouth closed because if something spurts out, you don't want it going in your mouth. Really gently, just put the knife in and try and manoeuvre the eyeball out. Now you've got two chances of this because, of course, you've got two eyeballs. Can you see there where it's coming out? Okay, so I'm just going to use my scissors. You have to use lots of different instruments for different jobs. And there we go, we've got the eyeball. Now there's his eyeball, but it's actually lost its support because um, I've pierced it. But inside there, we're going to find the lens. You have to be really careful and turn the eyeball inside out. Now here it is, here it is, can you see? That is the lens. It's like a little tiny round ball lens focuses the light onto the retina. This black stuff here is all the, the retina, the light sensitive cells found on the back of the eyeball. But they're just held in place by the fluid, so when you take the fluid out, they disappear too. Now clearly there's another eye that you can take out. But for now, let's move on to person number two and let's let them have a go at removing the gills. Take some scissors and try to cut these pins. They're really quite difficult to cut through. Okay, right now, we're going to look at the gills. And you have to remember that fish don't have lungs like we do. Our lungs are buried deep inside our chest. But the fish has gills. Now, in a moment, you'll see why fish die if they're out of water for too long which is crazy when you think about it because the air has 20 times more water, more oxygen in it than water does and yet they can't get enough oxygen so how's that what you're going to do is you're going to remove this hard bony flap again keep your mouth closed when you do this bit you might need some scissors you might need a knife and then all in one go, you want to take, you want to get your finger in and 
you want to try and get the whole gill arch out. Now these are really quite delicate so you don't want to be too rough with them. Again, you've got two chances at this because you've got the other side. Okay. When we look at these gill filaments, you can see there's no water to support them. So what would normally look like this and have a huge surface area is now like this. And that is the reason why fish will die when you take them out of the water. Because they have a reduced surface area to absorb the oxygen. You can see that as they place it in this water. Can you see how those gill filaments open up? and the surface area becomes huge. Look at how many layers there are and how they open up. Filaments open this way, but also this way. So overall, we have this huge gas exchange surface. Now person number two is finished, let's swap to person number three because they're gonna cut along the length of the fish and take some internal organs out. We're going to look inside the fish. And to do that, we're gonna to have to slice all the way down here. But of course, just like when you do your cooking at home, you never chop things in the air like this. It needs to be down flat and you need to be working really carefully with your hand out the way. Might need somebody to help you with this bit. As we open this up, you're going to see a big mushy mess. Now this is the bit that the fishmonger would normally have removed. You don't eat this bit because that is all it's got. Open it up so you can see all of the fishes inside. Now this bit here, this fleshy bit, is the bit that you would normally eat. You don't eat all of this. Again, you can put your finger in the mouth and you can see it goes all the way through. And on the other side there, you'll see the gills that we didn't remove. I'm just going to cut those out. Just behind the head, you're going to see this dark shaped, sort of prism shaped organ here. Because it's so dark, it means that there was a lot of blood in there. And that is actually the fisher's heart. Now, I'm sure you've all eaten liver before, and you can tell that liver has a very different texture to the texture um, of other tissues. This big thing here is the fisher's liver. I'm just going to remove that. Now this you really don't want to eat. This is the fisher's poop. Now sometimes you'll find little eggs around here. Remember that was where his little bum hole was. And um, that will mean that the fish was pregnant and about to lay eggs. But this one doesn't have any. It's the fisher's backbone. Now I'm trying to get inside this fisher's brain. Well, he's got a really hard skull. I'm going to carry on and keep trying. Well, I didn't manage to get at his brain, but I can see I've got another eye I can have a go at and remove the lens. Okay, so you've all had a turn now, but we still have another eyeball and another set of gills. So what you can do is take it in turns, remove the other eyeball, remove the other set of gills, and also just have a prod around, see what else you can find. Oh, smells of fish, but actually that's normal. Guess why? Because it is a fish. But did you know it's not actually the fish that smell a fish, it's the bacteria living in it. And that's why fish that's old that's had a few days since it's been killed will smell more fishy than a fish that's just been killed. So fish that smell fish is okay. And that's one of the tests that you do when you go to buy fish. Does it smell fishy? Because if it does, it's not fresh. At the end of the session, you're gonna clean your fish away. But what we do wanna make sure is that the implements go into the correct box. 
and don't get thrown away with the fish. So they go into one and they go into another. Leave your uh, chopping board on your desk. And have a great day. Don't forget to wash those fishy fingers. Oh, 